Hello everyone, Igor is here and welcome to my talk uh, Top things we do wrong with telemetry data in .NET And uh, before we start, let me introduce myself My name is Igor Fisenko I am Microsoft Cosmo Professional in Developer Technologies, Solution Architect at SoftServe And I really love .NET And uh, you can see from screenshot, from information that I try to find some interesting thing about uh, .NET. Yes, and uh, I think that my .NET is the best friend. And by the way, uh, best friend is real attribute as it wants to be best friends attribute. And you can find them in machine learning.net repo. So if you want to get slides or link to github revo with all source code uh, feel free to visit ifsenka.com so for the next 40 minutes my main idea is to provide some code snippets some information some knowledge that you can easily use on your new project or incorporate into existing project so this is my real experience and i'd like to share this experience with you. So, let's start. Okay, telemetry data. What is it? So, according to Wikipedia, telemetry is the collection of measurements or other data at remote or in inaccessible points, and they automatic transmission to receiving equipment for monitoring. Okay, this is according to Wikipedia. Uh, also, you can see on the slide, this is data path. And it's much easier to define from right to left when we have our end user. And uh, we have a lot of physical and logical layers and tools that the request should go from user to our application and then back from our application to user to provide some response to the user. So, and this is data bus, and all to write some data and uh, send some signals to our system. And uh, it helps us to navigate and find the root cause of some issue if we have. Okay, uh, this is definition. But in other words, we can say telemetry data, this is a known, metrics, events, logs, and traces. Uh, you can easily remember there is another acronym, MELT. So uh, I think that uh, almost of you are familiar uh, with metrics, but events, logs, and traces, but let me uh, give a quick uh, definition and provide some examples so we can uh, talk about the same things. So, metrics, uh, for the instance, it is number representing the current state. For example, uh, we have five megabytes memory available, or our CPU utilization is 30%, or well, now our server handles load of 100 requests per second. It is metrics. Also, we have events, right? That's something that happened. For example, we get request and we start processing this request. So request started and also there is some uh, associated data. For example, in our request, we have query, right? With some parameters. This is also part of our event. And of course, uh, everyone loves, uh, loves text messages that we usually um, write uh, when some code snippets are invoked and uh, we see some details for example okay our application is started now and hosting environment is development not production and uh, we are listening on our local host uh, endpoint is port 5001, something like that. And last item, 
in this telemetry data that we are going uh, to talk about today it's traces and traces is this combination of events or logs even sometimes metrics that are correlated between each other so we, we can create some chain of events or logs from point a to point b so now we know this information and let's uh, move to telemetry data life cycle and in theory uh, we have a first step it's produce our logs events or metrics or maybe uh, capture them right record them because if we use uh, a library it is already uh, produced by this library and we can capture them or we can ignore it depends on us but uh, after that we transmit this data uh, to some storage to some service to analyze uh, we can analyze aggregate do some math and after that we store this information aggregated information or maybe we archive our records our data so and uh, maybe you have some retention policy and uh, you should keep your records uh, only information uh, for years or maybe it's enough for 30 days and uh, in theory we should delete data we don't need data that we are won't be using so okay um, this is uh, in uh, ideal world but actually telemetry data life cycle uh, as i see it uh, from different types of project we produce record transmit store and delete you see the missing step is analyze and we do not analyze data and there are different reasons why we don't do it okay if you see uh, your data life cycle telemetry data life cycle uh, in your project uh, on the screen probably uh, it's not the end you can uh, go to the another uh, life cycle process and it's easy but sometimes it happens we produce record maybe even a lot of data really a lot of data we have everything we capture everything that happens inside our system uh, and outside our system but we do not do anything useful with this data and at the end we just delete this data so and actually we can simplify and say that some team some dev team do this practice they write logs they maybe even transmit somewhere store somewhere but real value is nothing so you can easily delete nothing happens yeah and this is possible uh even possible in another situation right when we try to capture all available information right and in this scenario even possible to have uh, daniel of service of our system of our product so and this is a real case when logging system even not help you even make something bad and uh, you can uh, find situation when your product is not working because logging system is not working so do not capture all available information even you spent a lot of money and you have uh, great infrastructure so you can handle uh, this massive uh, stream of data of your logs you can analyze but it's not easy to find something when you have a steady stream of garbage right and if you need to find something useful it's really hard in the lake of events so you always have a choice right and uh, how you build your system how you want to deal with uh, your system with your uh, telemetry data so and uh, as i mentioned before my key point is to provide some combination of tools 
that I personally use and uh, uh, you can use them as well and uh, streamline your experience. So let's talk about uh, our choice and my choice uh, to implement this choice. Right, so uh, first thing we should be vendor agnostic. If you remember the situation when we have a lot of difference, a lot of libraries for logging, and log, log for net, uh, and they provide their own templates, uh, approaches, and uh, standards of log messages. And uh, it was not easy to collect logs from, I don't know, one service and uh, also add a new service and extract all logs from more than one service and analyze somehow because different templates, uh, even dev team, it's not easy to standardize this behavior, how we want to proceed, how we want to log, and which information we want to write. So uh, I would recommend to find standards because it's easy to standard and actually not easy, <laughs> to be honest. But it's possible when you have uh, different companies and we have some standard like HTML5. I know there are a lot of problems, uh, different implementation of the same standard, but at least there's a standard. So we can navigate to documentation and see, okay, if it's a standard, it is defined. Maybe implementation is different a little bit uh, across uh, different companies, but still there is some standard, there is some uh, interface that different parties can communicate and uh, if you use different language for example in nowadays we have microservice architecture we have distributed systems and uh, one service might use go as a language and other system uh, might be written in c sharp right and we need something that we can reuse so uh, vendor agnostic for sure for your data collection and uh, if you have some open standard, you easily can control your data. And this is really important to control your data. You should define uh, how to extract, collect, transmit data, how you want to send data. Do you want to send data uh, to single target or maybe to multiple targets or maybe you want to filter your data and send uh, all warning messages to one system and all errors to another system. Maybe you have some proactive monitoring and you want to react as soon as possible. So it's also sometimes not easy with uh, libraries and uh, with implementation and uh, they didn't think about that. And uh, my choice for now, my personal choice, and uh, I would say it is battle tested and uh, some samples uh, are obfuscated, but they are from a real project that is used on production. My recommended tool set is to have uh, different sets of tools uh, because there is no uh, one, one tool for, for all scenarios. Uh, and first of all, open telemetry. So uh, presentation is not about some details and uh, describe you should use open telemetry as the best product, uh, best uh, library for that man. No, it's more about how you can use and how you can leverage power of uh, open telemetry and integrate with other uh, libraries. Uh, open telemetry, technically, it's not just some NuGet package, it's not library, it's something more. This is collection of APIs, of standards, supported by different companies, not only Microsoft. So it is a good sign that uh, it might be used by different languages, uh, different tools, and this is standard. Oh, uh, open telemetry, and of course, there is implementation for different languages, including .NET. Uh, we have SDK for .NET. It is 
um, standard and specifications are released. They have 1.0 version, but SDK is a uh, release candidate. There is stable version, but if you want to use uh, and get uh, some insight from your application, uh, you should sit on release candidate version and some preview for uh, data telemetry. But we would like, uh, we are going to see uh, during our demo. So, uh, this is for open telemetry, it's for tracing, it's for distributed tracing. Um, in this presentation, uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of time and uh, tell you uh, why distributed tracing is important and uh, explain what it is. But if you want, feel free to ask me, uh, reach me out, and we can uh, discuss and I can explain. Uh, so, open telemetry is for distributed tracing. In future, you can use open telemetry for metrics and for logs. But logs now is beta, uh, and uh, metrics is an alpha review. So it's even not really candidate. So it's early stage. Uh, uh, my suggestion uh, use open telemetry for tracing. It's a great uh, collection of tools and SDK. For log, uh, for logging, for uh, capturing and uh, emitting our own logs. I would recommend to stay with Serilog. Uh, I know we have iLogger and all other stuff uh, around .NET, but Serilog uh, is easily might be integrated. So it is something like superset of logs and you can add different uh, extension to Serilog and integrate easily with OpenTelemetry. Um, I also sh show in a few slides uh, during our demo session how you can integrate uh, and uh, use uh, both uh, worlds, open telemetry and serialog. So serialog, it's structured logging on steroids. Also, it is uh, outside of this presentation uh, idea why you need structured logging and uh, what are benefits of this approach? Why structured logging is so important? So, but um, I will provide some uh, samples uh, during uh, our demo session. And of course, monitoring tools. I think that you can select uh, any uh, model tool like uh, uh, <laughs> Application Insight. Uh, you can use not only Microsoft, you can use uh, a new relic or, or data dog or some other stuff. Um, they are good and they support open telemetry, by the way. So it, it is great that you can easily switch, right? Uh, you have some extra layer. And if you want to switch, for example, from application inside from Azure application inside and send all your telemetry data to data dot. You can do this through configuration file. Yeah, there are some um, uh, code specific changes, but you can do it. So, and you don't need to go and change uh, each line of your log approach of your source code. And also uh, for local development, because sometimes it's okay, yeah, we use application inside our distributed system. Uh, we have uh, all traces, all logs, all metrics inside application inside. But what about your local development? How you deal? Do you create a new application inside and you have some dev instance or something like that? It's also okay. But sometimes uh, it's not a uh, optimal solution. And uh, with open telemetry and serialog, you can use uh, two uh, great products. They are uh, available uh, for free uh, for uh, development uh, usage and for personal usage. Uh, I'm talking about serialog sec. Uh, this is UI where you can uh, navigate uh, through your logs and do some 
uh, filtering, searching, but if you want to use uh, for production, uh, there's commercial license. But for, for development, uh, for local development, uh, commercially, you can use. So it's a great. And also, this is available like a Docker image. And also, it will provide you some instruction how you can easily uh, spin up a new instance. And for distributed uh, systems, we want to see all traces and how our request from uh, goes from one point to another point. So for this, there is Ziki. Uh, I recommend to use Jaeger. I don't know, uh, nothing personal, but uh, I like uh, Jaeger. But you can use uh, Ziki or other tools uh, to visualize your uh, traces. And uh, also uh, during demo. I show how you can easily spin up a Jaeger and uh, analyze um, your uh, traces. So, and with that, we are good with slides. So let's go and see uh, real tips and tricks so you, you can use uh, in your uh, project. So, uh, first of all, let's start with uh, simple uh, idea about uh, log levels because for me uh, they are not clear and uh, I would say that it is okay to have log debug, log trace, log information, log error, log critical but you should ask what is different between log error and log critical and when I should use log warning and not log error or something like that. And um, if you don't have clear understanding in your team and you are, don't have records in Wiki and uh, some specification, uh, what type of errors and uh, what type of log uh, level we should associate to this type of error, it won't be clear for all team members. Uh, so um, this is my vision and uh, I also think about different uh, log levels, something like not log warning or maybe this is to investigate tomorrow or log critical means for me wake me in the middle of the night. So I guess uh, instead of log critical and log debug, log warning, uh, we should have uh, uh, more clear names of our of log system. So you can try, you can create maybe uh, some uh, wrapper around uh, iLogger library, but um, also you can uh, discuss with your team. Do you want to write log information and store all information on our production or we don't need because for example if we have uh, gigabytes of data of our logs is it easy to analyze and find the root cause and if you write all your uh, requests to health endpoint that okay we have 200 is it useful information can you extract some insights from this information probably yes right response time for example but for that you can uh, use some adaptive sampler you don't need to send and analyze all 10 requests if they are pretty similar right if this is the same performance bucket so you can easily uh, send two or three from this 10 and filter now it is also possible uh, by the way with open telemetry uh, you can uh, configure this as well so uh, let's talk about uh, demo sample. Um, it is available on GitHub. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, I provided some configuration so you can uh, provision your dev environment. Uh, I am using Docker for Jaeger, uh, Serilog, and RabbitMQ. Uh, if you use Rider uh, and clone uh, repo, from GitHub, uh, 
all configuration will be available. You just need to select and run. Well, you can analyze, open uh, this configuration because it just docky run an image with some uh, exposed ports and environment variables. And we use Revit in view. It does to show something uh, to uh, simulate distributed system and uh, not just simple flow with HTTP calls or something like that. Uh, more uh, than HTTP calls. And we have a uh, system, it is order system. We uh, can create a new order and uh, there are a uh, couple services, billing services, uh, shipping services, uh, and order services. So, and we have order generator. It simulates our users or another uh, API. Uh, layer. So um, it's pretty straightforward, but let's go and uh, see some uh, tricks that you can achieve inside your code. And sometimes it could, uh, we are doing some things not optimal. And it is okay. Uh, this is my knowledge, my experience. It means that I did this wrong. So uh, please do not repeat uh, my mistakes and uh, do more optimal. Uh, than I uh, did before. Uh, everyone knows that we have some iLogger, we have uh, Logger, and we log everything. And this is okay. Uh, and sometimes it's important uh, to log uh, everything. But please remember that if you log something uh, using iLogger, using ISP.NET Core, ISP.NET Core, uh, and logger, uh, please do not use interpolated strings. Uh, you should pass uh, everything as parameter. So, um, and this is, uh, saves uh, a small amount of memory and uh, you avoid some uh, unwanted memory allocation. But if it is critical pass and you cannot remove uh, logging information, but you configure, for example, in debug, in develop mode, you uh, write all logs, uh, all information level using configuration or something like that. Uh, it is a key. And uh, for production, you disable and say configuration minimum log level, for example, warning. But still, you have, uh, let me open just for example you have log information right and on production you disable and say uh, minimum log level it's warning so it means that we go to log information create this message template allocate memory but actually we do not send logs and that's all right but we allocate memory and we call this method and pass parameters. And as I said, do not use string interpolation, right? Because it's semantic structured logging. So if you want to find all records with this order ID, you can do this. So uh, I found some error in my recent project, not error, issue, right? In my recent project with memory allocation, it was critical pass. And uh, it is okay for development, as I said, but during production, it allocates a lot of memory because uh, it was HTTP response and everything is good if it's 200 and empty body. But if it is 503, it's HTML. It's entire uncompressed HTML page. So if you try to log this, even you actually do not send, but you created this string, right? String on the internet and uh, we allocate a lot. So, uh, yeah, and uh, to fix this problem uh, was uh, add the switch. If this log level is enabled, after that, just go and create this uh, and invoke this uh, method. API, uh, not API, C-sharp call, 
and lock this information. Otherwise, just skip this section and that's all. Uh, with .NET 6, you can even do more. You can optimize your existing logs. So you can use extend, uh, attribute logger message. As see, there is a trick. Uh, my order place handler now is partial class, and I can use this, uh, C sharp source generator to generate uh, generate actual code during compilation. And uh, there is my uh, empty method to lock my order, and I mark this partial and say, okay, this is logger message attribute. Uh, log level information and this is my message and information this is my logger because I like to add some additional uh, scope and some uh, variables uh, some additional information and there is order ID and uh, during compilation it will generate implementation of this code so with .NET 6 resource code generator you can even improve performance of your logging so uh, you can create only one instance of this uh, message template and uh, if you know there is a logger define message there is a, some uh, optimization from .NET team and with a uh, logger message and search code generation uh, you can do this easily and you don't need to write boilerplate code. So uh, this is one uh, optimization. Uh, please take a look, uh, actually two, right? You can use switch if it is hot pass. Uh, you can benchmark and the profile and see it's, it's reduced. A lot of memory allocation because we are working with strings so and you can see that we have a source code generator because this code will be generating the real compilation okay uh, let's see configuration of serial log and configuration of open telemetry so uh, i have a simple uh, .NET uh, six application you see that we have everything in one file in program right we create our host um, use uh, shared serial log configuration this is my extension uh, we'll see in a moment uh, and service bus uh, it is just uh, from uh, and service by uh, and service bus docs page everything in standard it's uh, not interesting uh, for this demo and also we do configuration at shared open telemetry tracing and that's all uh, for all other services i did the same just reuse uh, two extension so let's navigate and see what we have inside this extension i think that everyone can easily configure uh, serial log but it's hard to find working solution and uh, that's why I give you obfuscated a little bit but from real uh, project from the um, of production so it's it, it's not something uh, that I just collect grab and feel free to use oh feel free to use yes but this is a working sample and uh, um, I use really uh, not each day but sometimes troubleshooting it helps so uh, use serial log is uh, pretty straightforward uh, read from configuration read from services if you have some dependency injection and uh, configuration using di uh, cool things that you can using serial log you can override from source code sometimes it's important because it is shared across all projects and uh, sometimes I want something specific for project. I can use my configuration file using upsettings, uh, the development JSON or upsettings JSON. 
or sometimes I want just to get rid of this logging section that is not clear. Sometimes uh, maybe your runtime try to overwrite and you don't know about that. I want to control this. And if I'm in development, I would like to set minimum level for debug for everything. Or if it is production, let's say minimum level warning. Yes, technically I can overwrite and configure, but sometimes I want to stop uh, explicitly and say, okay, this is, well, let, let's say, and send everything to console or everything error sent uh, to another uh, target. Uh, also, uh, great that you can enrich all your logs automatically and you can provide span and uh, with span means integration with open telemetry and uh, i'll talk about open telemetry uh, in a minute or you can enrich with exception details you don't need to do this uh, uh, manual uh, and boilerplate code for example if you get uh, entity framework to be update exception you know that okay i can go navigate to some property and extract information or if it is uh, http request and uh, it is too many requests i can uh, log somehow uh, different in c sharp we have a uh, cool feature destruction no destructuring sorry uh, yes and uh, in serial log there is integration you can use uh destructures that for example uh for db update exception uh, this is idea that uh, extension if you have db update exception it can quickly extract because it's not uh it doesn't use a reflection and it's not slow it's c sharp code that actually use property and uh, do this really fast and if you use refit uh, refit http uh, it's a uh, helper for uh, working with rest api uh, wrapper around http client when you can define interface and uh, uh, behind the scene it generates http client with all methods and you just call interface it's pretty cool uh, uh, framework this library uh, and also uh, there is a uh, destructor so uh, to get uh, information quickly and do not create boilerplate so and you can configure this and also you can reach with some basic stuff right this uh, machine names assembly version uh, correlation id header if all your uh, clients api clients uses some uh, uh, correlation ID, you can enrich your logs with correlation ID automatically. So, uh, this is idea. And uh, one more, uh, just just uh, to share with you. For example, uh, I like application insights and uh, I use application insights. And for example, if you want to send all information to application insight, you can do this also easily, right? And uh, there is a source code. Uh, unfortunately, documentation is not updated yet on Serialog official page. Uh, and the uh, sample that is provided uh, on official uh, docs uh, for now uh, working on Windows, but not working on Linux app service. And this is a working solution, verified and tested more than uh, six months. So uh, feel free to use. And uh, also, uh, I need to send pull request and make sure that uh, uh, documentation is up to date. So, uh, good. Let's talk about open telemetry uh, configuration. So, open telemetry, the same uh, configuration, pretty straightforward at open telemetry tracing, uh, add source, uh, everything from documentation. Uh, from my experience, uh, please filter some uh, requests 
for health endpoint, for some uh, internal stuff. For example, this is a uh, robots txt. It is uh, Azure App Service internal. If you host in container, um, they request your URL slash robots uh, 923456txt and uh, usually you don't have such file and uh, uh, your application uh, returns uh, uh, 404 are not found and they say okay we know that uh, your application is up and running it's not 500 not, not something like that it's just 404 so uh, uh, you're up and running so uh, you're ready to serve requests uh, Swagger, you don't need this information uh, in your uh, open telemetry uh, and in your traces. Uh, also, great feature of open telemetry out of the box, you have uh, automatic instrumentation. So you don't need to go and change your code and uh, uh, add some uh, additional boilerplate, right? You, you can uh, easily uh, extract this information using modern approach because we have uh, different event listener, diagnostic uh, listener, and we can, for example, for each tip uh, client uh, using diagnostic listener with underhood in instrument uh, instrument everything and uh, send to uh, our uh, target system. So also from uh, my experience if you use application inside you don't want to have duplicate requests that send on information to application inside host or maybe call uh, local host and send information to your local Jaeger instance we can add uh, the same for entity framework SQL instrumentation also there are some configuration and also if there is connection sync for application inside because this is from production environment we can uh, send this information to Azure monitor or you can use your open telemetry uh, agent and send to Zipkin, Prometheus or other uh, target uh, systems that you're going uh, to use to analyze your data. So, uh, also a cool feature in ISP.NET 6, you can easily uh, add HTTP login for all your request and response information. Because before uh, I had to create my own middleware and it was not uh, optimal and uh, it was additional overhead even for 20% just to capture body of uh, request and response. Uh, since .NET 6, I spent .NET Core 6, you can easily use at HTTP login and, 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 and that's it. And you can configure, for example, uh, just to uh, write X correlation ID. Because if you then specify some uh, there is a set of uh, uh, whitelisted uh, header attributes. All other will be uh, obfuscated, and uh, instead of actual value, you will see something like reductive or something like that. And uh, please uh, configure body log limit because it's really important. Uh, you know, it's still overhead. If your body uh, uh, has a huge amount of data, it will take some time to get capture and also this is uh, memory traffic because it's sync uh, allocation. And uh, with ISP.NET Core 6, you have a lot of additional um, features uh, working around activity and uh, this is diagnostic information. For example, if you want to add some additional information uh, to activities that will be captured by Open Telemetry uh, SDK library, you can get 
uh, this interface HTTP activity feature that it's available since uh, .NET 6 and add some additional configuration uh, to your activity. And also, uh, just to save time, if you are uh, migrating or starting working with um, uh, .NET 6, ASP.NET Core 6, and you use um, Entity Framework migration and you generate a SQL script from your uh, code-first approach, um, there is a breaking changes and uh, um, they use some internal stop the host exception uh, because they need to spin up a host, uh, generate a C sharp uh, model in memory, and does it generate SQL script? And uh, when they done, they want to somehow signal the host and say, okay, we are done, just stop uh, this process. And now they throw exception. And uh, it is tricky because uh, it's only for entity uh, framework uh, for now. And there is open issue, so we can navigate and uh, check all details. But actually, now in all our uh, projects, on the recent project, uh, we had to add uh, this if uh, condition because if it is stop the host exception, it is okay, we just uh, shut down uh, the host. So uh, let me quickly run, I know we have run out of time, but let me quickly run and show this is in action. And also you can download or if you have questions, because it is more like overview and uh, you can navigate source code and uh, go through it and find okay this is cool i can reuse because i will definitely reuse and recommend on other projects and uh, keep this um, code snippets up to date so uh, let me send also this available um, request i have api just to create a new order Okay, new order created, our order generator, you see that all information uh, has been logged, request, request, and response, everything. So, also, it is processed uh, by different services, and uh, sometimes it's not easy to understand, okay, how it is working, and if it is new project, we'll start another source code. It's much easier uh, to navigate and see how your request is going. So uh, let's navigate. We have order generator. We have operations, API orders, my API, and also I have background working. Just, just uh, send some events. Let's see all. And you can see, okay, we have API orders, for example, we just generated. We see billing service, order generator, order service, shipping service. So let's navigate. So, and we can see now our tracing. So we integrated, we see API orders, calls, after that, our order service sent a message, right? We even can see this message. By the way, in service bus, you still use XML for serialization by default. Now, see a lot of information. You see uh, that we send. We have order service that process our message, and uh, everything was good. And information uh, forwarded to shipping service and billing service. We have billing services and also we enrich our data with payment transaction ID so you can find uh, inside source code how you can easily enrich, navigate. And also what we can do, we can navigate everything in local host and see all our logs, right? And uh, using serial log and you see our machine name, parent ID, span ID, 
It's a great for navigation. Uh, for example, trace ID. It means find me all operations for this trace ID. Or I even can go and look up by trace ID and see this distributed tracing. And you know, it's cool because now when I have this correlation, I can navigate and see how <laughs> my architecture looks like from uh, request response. We have order generator, order service, shipping and billing service. So, uh, it was quick overview, a lot of information. Uh, feel free to ask your question, please. Uh, I love to provide answer and details. So, and with that, thank you so much uh, for your time. Have a great conference and be safe. Thank you. Bye.